Yum, yum! Hey everybody, and welcome back to Moto with Ellery. Um, and this is actually something that I saw on the uh, the Facebook uh, threads. I was just going to make a really short video. It was going to be like a minute long, uh, but then uh, it looked like there's some more things that uh, might be nice to cover. Uh, so I thought I'd turn it into an actual episode. I do, just as a side note, have a number of other ones that are uh, sitting just waiting to be recorded uh, that will be out soon, and then there's some other exciting stuff that I've got coming out as well. Um, anyway, so with that, uh, let's just dive right in. In this episode, we're going to be looking at, uh, at transferring baked data or any kind of paint and texture data in Moto from one image or one UV layout into another image, another UV layout. Now this could be if you want to repack something and emphasize uh, texture space for one part versus another, and on one you want to have uh, the UVs laid out so everything is uh, equal size so you get uh, equal texel density, or if you want to take one where you're just going to rebake part of an image for part of, a, of, a, of an object, lots of different applications for this, but there are going to be many times where you want to have texture on one UV map and one image, and you want to transfer it to another one. So let's look at how we can do that. Uh, now, with anything like this, there are a number of different ways that you can do this. Um, this is the way that I use and I've had a lot of success with. Um, there are other ways that I know and I've also used in the past as well, but this is the way that I tend to get uh, the quickest results and the easiest way to actually do it, giving you also a bunch of flexibility. So uh, what I've got here uh, is the uh, just out of the uh, Moto stock content for the uh, the game data and this is the unreal uh, version of this chest um, and this has uh, UV maps on it already it has a texture UV map and then it also has a texture detail UV map uh, we're mostly just going to be looking at the texture one uh, and then it has a number of different let's hide these here first has a number of different um, uh, material layers on them it has uh, base channels here so um, these are all set for the unreal uh, material so it's got base color normal specular metallic roughness and ambient occlusion those are all set up on here uh, and what we want to do is we want to be able to transfer uh, this which is basically our color image onto a different UV map now one thing to note is if you do it the way that uh, that I'm showing you here you won't get um, all of the bleed on the edges uh, the same way so just something to note um, if you have everything set up well though that shouldn't really matter because you should have enough over overlap data uh, to not give you any weird unsightly seams. Uh, so let's go ahead and hide that. And the first thing that I'm going to do is actually create a new UV layout. Now I mostly like the way that this is right now, so just for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and make a new map which we'll call transfer, seems like a good name, uh, and then I'm just going to right click here and paste my UV data back in. That way I've got all the stuff that was on the original. And then what I'm going to do just to give myself uh, something different to work with, again, like I said, you might have uh, actual specific needs for how you're setting up another UV, but in this case, um, really all I want to do is repack them so that I get something that looks different. Uh, so I'm going to repack everything um, checked on, and I'm going to go by pixel size uh, with a 10 uh, pixel border. We'll click OK, and as you can see, it's uh, it's restacked everything here. We've got some open space, which could be useful if you want to include something in. Uh, and then it's given everything a little bit more padding than it had in the original. So that's based off of that 10 pixel distance when I repacked it. Um, but the problem is now that if I want to be able to use this with this, um, I don't have the data on there that I need. So what I'm going to do is leave this uh, texture, um, this transfer uh, UV map selected. And then I'm going to go up here into the shader tree. I'm going to add a new layer, image map, and I'm just going to create a new image. And I'm going to put that inside of my folder here with my video. And I'm going to call this diffuse transfer. This is technically a base color because I'm using the Unreal material, but you know we'll, we'll call it a deal. So diffuse transfer. Now I'm going to make this a target image. Now there are two things also going on here, which um, I'll mention as we get going. The first thing is, is that as you're doing this, if you start with something that has an RGBA that has an alpha channel in it, by default, once you create that, it's going to come in with a blank alpha channel, which means that it will be transparent and it won't override anything else on the image. Uh, and then you can actually use that alpha channel later for texture packing or something like that. Um, in this case, we're not going to need it for that, but um, but I'm going to leave this on RGBA just so I can show you two different ways that this can happen. So you can see with this set to diffuse color, here let's go ahead and change this uh, to our Unreal base color. You can see no changes are happening. Uh, if I pull up my uh, my preview render, you can see nothing's happening. If I turn that off, still nothing happening because it's just an empty alpha channel sitting on top of 
the uh, Unreal base color channel. And it's not, so it's not doing anything because it's basically nothing there. Now, if I had done that and had a, a black uh, image just to start with, with no alpha, then this would be all black and I'd have to hide it. Uh, so let's go ahead and hide that or get rid of the preview render for right now. Um, so what I'm going to do now is with this selected here, I can double check and make sure that this is set up the way that I want. But um, if I had this UV map, the transfer UV map selected when I created it, it's going to by default assign it to the, uh, the transfer UV texture set. You can always double check that if you feel so inclined. Um, so now with that there, and right now it's not contributing to anything, um, I can go ahead and transfer the data just right here by doing right click and just choosing uh, bake to texture. And what that will do is that will take anything that has the current uh, texture channel effect. So in this case, Unreal Base Color. And it's going to assign that um, everything in the stack on into there. In this case, we only have the one image. So when we click Bake to Texture, um, it will go to our baking. It will just transfer everything over. It should be pretty quick because it's not really doing anything. It's just making sure that it's reassigning and anti-aliasing the pixels from where they were on the other UV to where they are now. So now if you have that, and this is still visible, um, we'll see that basically nothing happens. So if we just maximize this view here, um, you can see that we've got this here. When we turn it off, there is a very slight uh, difference happening here, and that's just based off of the uh, the size of the texture. But if we zoom in really, really close here, I have advanced GL set up with some anti-aliasing and stuff. Um, so it's a little slow here, but we turn this on and off. You can see that uh, our bake is just a little bit softer. You could always bake at higher resolution. Um, you know, I'm just doing it this resolution to save time. But you do see that there is essentially no visual change other than that, which if you're not right up on the object is going to be essentially uh, negligible uh, and not something that you would notice. You can see that there you go. So everything is transferred. And we can double check this um, just by double clicking on this guy. And you'll see that we have our texture laid out. In this case, we have uh, the, the band main part of the chest going left to right. Whereas if we go to this one, it's going up and down. So we can see we've changed that and we've trans uh, we've successfully transferred everything over. Now where this uh, this method becomes really powerful in my opinion is uh, when it comes to actually combining multiple things into one. So in this case I've got this um, this direct transfer in here and it's just giving me everything uh, that was in there and it's just sitting um, in a different location now. But uh, the other thing that I could do is I could take, and let's turn on a few different layers here. I've got uh, two occlusion passes that are handling some of the grime in the corners and then some of the uh, lightning kind of uh, wear on the on the edges. So uh, the, the occluded areas versus the uh, convex areas. Uh, and then I've got uh, some streaks for some dirt and some kind of spilling, um, you know, windswept kind of stuff on it. And then I have just a general um, dirt texture sitting on on it as well just to give us um, a little bit of um, extra kind of grunge obviously this is a really really uh, quick job of adding in detail to this you could go in with an empty texture layer and paint on detail and this would also work um, now where this is cool though is that when you're using this with procedural textures uh, the thing is is we see this here with the procedural but then when we look at the real time we're not getting anything because those uh, those procedural textures are not showing up in real time. So uh, let's go ahead and close that again. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is with this visible, if we, sorry, I <laughs> shouldn't have closed that yet. But with this visible, um, you can see that we're just getting the original texture. When we hide that, we're getting the new kind of grungified texture, right? So uh, let's also do this then here. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the image that's applied. Uh, so let's go up here and actually before I do anything else, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, save all of my images because um, because those do not save automatically with your file. So let's go ahead and do save all images. So now that those are, now those are actually saved. And now what we're going to do is apply a new image here. So we'll have basically a clean version and a dirty version, if you will. So let's go ahead and do add clip. Um, and let's just do a new image. And this one I'll call this diffuse worn. That'll work. So we've got one where we're adding wear to it. And use all the same settings uh, for now. Let's just go ahead and click OK. Uh, and then same thing, right click, 
bake to texture. And what this will do now, it's going to take a little bit longer to bake because it's actually having to calculate those two occlusion layers uh, and it's having to uh, combine and merge everything together. And so it's going to take just a little bit longer to bake. But in the end, we're going to have everything all put together just the way it looks in preview. But we'll have that in the real time uh, OpenGL environment. And it also means that we'll have that to export if we're going to use that in a game engine. And there we go, through the magic of pausing my video capture, we now have that uh, complete and baked. So let's go ahead and hide this, and we're gonna turn this off. And now if we show this, we'll see that we have our dirty version. So um, our, our version here is all set up, uh, and we pretty much have everything that we had in all of these layers together, but all just happening in one layer. Now really what I've got is a clean version and a dirty version, uh, just by baking in some of the uh, the texture values that, um, that were contributing to that originally that we didn't see in OpenGL, but we do see in, inside a preview. Now we actually get to see them in both places, and now we have two different images uh, based off of our new UV texture locations that we'd created, uh, and those are all set and transferred over. So this is a good and powerful method for being able to transfer um, your texture data if you need from one uh, UV layout to another, whether you're optimizing that UV layout or, uh, or something else that you need to change and have an alternate UV. And this is also a great and powerful method for combining several different uh, texture inputs. In this case, I'm using all on the uh, Unreal base color and transferring those all into a single image map that I can use either for OpenGL view inside of Moto without having to worry about opening preview or for export to real time uh, for use in game engines so that I can apply that there. So that does it for this one. If uh, you like this video or videos like it, you can follow me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Ellery, or you can get this uh, episode or any other one a la carte on Gumroad, gumroad.com slash Ellery. Uh, please stay tuned. There will be more episodes like this coming out soon. I'm going to be trying getting on a weekly-ish uh, schedule for getting these out and also have another uh, big kit about to, uh, about to be released. And so stay tuned to see that. Until then, go make something cool, and I'll see you in the next one.